Number one, not planning. Plan out your story. Figure out how you work. Are you more of a free spirit or do you like to plan everything out? Once you figure that out, research the different plot structures out there. You may find that saving the cat works best for you or free tags pyramid. Once you figure that out, get to work and start planning out your story. Number two, judging as you go. I know some people do this, but don't stop to look back at your previous work and scrutinize it. Just keep it moving. Do it at the end. If you need to, write notes within your manuscript saying that you'll get back to this part or improve on this section, but after that, just keep it moving. You want to get to the end of your story, especially if it's the first draft. You want to get to the part where you can type the end. This goes for editing as well. Wait till the end to edit your manuscript, especially when it comes to the big picture items. You can't edit what you haven't written yet. So when you've written everything down, then you can go back, see what's missing, what you need to add. Number three, you don't study the art of storytelling. There was a video I watched of this lady and she was saying that in her circle, her writing friends, they told her that they don't read craft books because they feel like it will hinder their creativity. And I wonder how many other people believe that or feel that way. Craft books give you the bare bones. It gives you direction. When you're all over the place with your story, it takes forever to finish. Studying the story elements, improving your prose and your grammar, that is all a lifetime process and a person can always improve. Hi, my name is Vivian. I'm an aspiring sci-fi and fantasy writer and welcome. Stay tuned for the end of this video. I will have a bonus tip for you guys. Number four, you keep comparing yourself. Sometimes when I am reading a book, at times I will compare how the author writes their sentences or how they write their descriptions and I'll compare it to my own work and then I have to tell myself to stop, stop it. I'll be like, Viv, just enjoy the book. Or I will ask myself, how can I learn from this? Or how can I incorporate this into my own work? If I don't do that, I'll start going to this dark rabbit hole that I cannot get myself out of. I have to remind myself that I am learning, I am growing, this is a lifelong journey and I will improve as time goes by. Same with you, you'll improve. The more you write, the more you study, you'll get better and better and better. Number five, perfectionism. I call this CPS. No, I don't mean Child Protective Services. Chronic Perfectionist Syndrome. There are levels to perfectionism, but writers, we got it bad. You believe your book has to be perfect before anyone reads it. There is always something that needs to be changed, always something that needs to be redone, rewritten. There's always something that needs fixing. Yes, rewrites are important, Rewrites are a must, but come on, we know the difference between a rewrite and just avoiding putting your book out into the world. Like, you know, I know the difference. Remember, nothing in this world is perfect, and that includes your story. Next time you're feeling crappy about your writing, go to Amazon, go to Neil Gaiman's American Gods, and read all the one-star reviews you will feel a whole a lot better. Number six, you're still world building. Come on, like wrap it up, okay? You don't have to know your world to the T like Tolkien, okay? You can build your world as you go. Especially if you're writing a series, you can build your world enough for book one, book two, expand your world a bit more. Book three, expand your world a bit more. You don't have to know everything before you write your book. Another thing you can do is you can also make your world a bit smaller. It doesn't have to be an epic world. Number seven, analysis paralysis. 
when all you do is outline and study. Come on, wrap it up. Your book isn't going to write itself. It ha there has to be a time where you have done enough studying and enough outlining and you just write. Write. Go on and write. Right, number eight, you don't have any critique partners. They're important. You need to have some. Your mom, friend, or cousin are not going to help you improve. They won't give you the criticism that you need to improve on your work or they'll be hypercritical and not quite understand your story or what you need. Find other writers to be your critique partners because they are either on the same journey as you or they are where you're trying to be. So where can you find critique partners? You can find them on social media. I mean, you're here, so you are part of the writing and book community. You can find them on social media. Also, you can go to meetup.com and search with your location writing groups that meet up every week. And you can find a whole bunch of writers in the same group, in the same community that will be open and happy to critique your work. Join mentor mentorship programs like Pitch Wars or Author Mentor Match, where you'll find others who are in the same boat as you. And if, you know, you don't get picked by a mentor, you can reach out to any of the potential mentees who also didn't get picked and you guys can exchange you know each other's work and also i know that there are some like author tubers or like some communities that have like discord groups that people can join and you can find critique partners that way number nine afraid of others reading your work stop it it is not as scary as you think when you find the right critique partners aka other writers to read your work they will give you the guidance you need and you'll be happy you let others read your work because feedback is so important. Plus, if you don't want others to read your book, then why are you writing it to get published? Number 10, give yourself a deadline, a hard deadline. Give yourself a date that you want to be done with your book and stick with that date. Give yourself a realistic timeline, knowing that, hey, if I actually put my mind to it, stuck with it, I can be finished at this time. Don't be unrealistic and say, oh, my deadline will be in three months. I know some people can do that, but I don't think that's the majority of us. If you don't have the discipline to stick with an end date, you'll be writing your book forever. You will always be pushing back the date and your book will never be finished. For the longest, I didn't do this and I wish I did because it would have cut down a lot of time wasted on my part. Now for the bonus tip. Stop thinking that you are not good enough because you are. There is a reason why you want to write stories. There is a reason. So let the doubt go and know that there is an audience out there waiting to read your story, okay? Always remember that. And again, no such thing as perfection. You're always learning, you're always growing, and you're always improving, all right? If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Go ahead, subscribe if you wanna see more videos from me. I do have some how to plot your novel worksheets below. Just look at the description box and go ahead and watch the next video here. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.